Mr. Hevel, you have a calorimetry experiment for us today? We do, Mr. Moore. We have calorimetry galore here. <laughs> Absolutely. So, what we're doing here is popping up calorimetry and everybody's favorite, Hess's Law. And here's what we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to determine the enthalpy of formation for solid magnesium oxide. That's your goal. So, there's okay. actually three different reactions that you're going to combine using Hess's law to calculate that enthalpy of formation for MgO. And it's important to remember how this is defined. Enthalpy of formation has a very specific definition. So you have to think about that definition when you're trying to come up with this equation. So yes, notice we're not giving you what the chemical equation, the target equation for our Hess's Law solution, you've got to come up with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, but think about the definition and, and you can mm -hmm. see what, what that equation is going to be. You're trying to find the change in enthalpy for this process. Okay. Now to do that, we're going to run two different chemical reactions experimentally using coffee cup calorimetry. And then you'll have to add in a third equation that is the formation of liquid water. Now this one isn't experimental. You're just going to basically look that up. Okay? So here are our two reactions. Here's what we're mixing together. One reaction is solid magnesium metal with hydrochloric acid. It's going to react and make magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. Our other reaction is solid magnesium oxide, again reacting with HCl, again makes MgCl2, but water in that case. Okay? Now, you're going to have to figure out the net ionic equation. We gave you the molecular equation. You're need, you'll need the net ionic. Okay? And, hopefully you can read my blue writing down here, you're going to pick one of these reactions to be the basis of your particulate drawing. Okay, just one of these for your particulate drawing, whichever one you like the best. Okay. Okay. So, yep, we have these two chemical equations. Those are experimental ones. This one, you have to write the equation, come up with a delta H just from the table. Right. right. So Those are your three given equations, yep. yep. Coffee cup calorimetry process will get you the delta H value for these two. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now in the end, um, what you're going to do is figure out what's your percent error between the experimental value and the theoretical value for the enthalpy of formation of magnesium oxide. So over here, I don't know if you've dealt with percent error before. Percent error is the absolute value of your theoretical value minus experimental value over the theoretical value times 100. You probably have used that before, but we probably. wanted to just make sure you have it. Exactly. Okay, and realize that you can look up the theoretical value for the enthalpy of formation of MGL. Mm -hmm. We're back here at the lab station. Looks like we have some lab equipment to measure some temperature changes. Yes, we do. We're ready to do some coffee cup calorimetry. And so the heart and soul of this are is two uh, styrofoam coffee cups. In Troy, we believe in using only the finest equipment for our students. That looks like excellent lab equipment. It, it's unbelievable. And we're using not <laughs> just one, but two cups. Mm -hmm. And we also have this precision-made high-tech lid Made in America, made I in believe. America. Probably made in room 302. <laughs> and uh, again, the whole idea with coffee cup calorimetry is we're trying to prevent heat flow either in or out of our cups, right? So we're looking at just the heat flow that's going on inside the cup. Mm -hmm. We're pretending the outside world is not influencing it at all. Right. Um, here's the thermometer we're using. 
It's Mr. Moore's favorite thermometer because it has blue spirit in it. We used to have a dozen of these. We are down to yeah. one final blue yeah. thermometer. So um, we try to take good care of that. Good care. Now notice the graduations because you want to get the sig figs right. I had it in focus and Probably it because goes I'm out. Too, right? <laughs> Maybe between it's the two. Helpful. Yeah, but we will get an initial. We'll put it into the acid and make sure that we have the initial temperature of the acid. Now, here's the acid. The acid is one molar hydrochloric acid. Now, I just wrote it this way, but think of it as 1.00 molarity. Mm -hmm. Okay? And we're measuring out 50 milliliters, which we've already done. Okay, so 50 milliliters of our one molar HCl. I don't know if you can, if it's clear, but you can see the graduations here. We're going up in one milliliter increments. Yep, still trying to, oh man, I got it in focus now, maybe. I should probably just leave it sit down. Yeah, set it down. So I can get a good shot of, uh, I want you to be able to see what the graduations are on that graduated on the If I have it positioned right, you can see the bottom of the meniscus is just touching that line. So how do you read that thing if the graduations are to the whole milliliter and the meniscus is right on the line? Okay, so here we go. We're gonna add our hydrochloric acid solution to the cup. Um, you're gonna to wanna to know the initial temperature. Get it to stand up. Oh, yeah. Notice the thermometer is going up in one degree intervals. So think about your sick face. using magnesium metal. So here it is. We have a piece of magnesium ribbon. Got it. Okay. And now we're going to drop it in the cup and observe the temperature. starts reacting right away. I'm stirring a little bit to help distribute the heat. I don't know if you can hear the fizzing. Yep, we can definitely see something happen. It's going right up Mr. Hevel's nose. <laughs> yeah, this is the second trial that we've run and uh, both times that seems to find its way right up to uh, Mr. Hevel's nose and eyes. <laughs> Hydrogen uh, is a very nasty gas to try to breathe. I mean, it will make you cough and gag. We have cleared the room before uh, with, with too yes. much of a hydrogen cloud. Uh, so it is, I mean, it, it, it's cute to watch people uh, like Mr. Hevel, yeah. um, you know, have to breathe it in. It has eyes all watery, but uh, really it, it does hurt. It's not pleasant. No, it's not pleasant. I think the magnesium is dissolved now. I don't know if okay. the temperature is done changing. Well, that was quite a temperature change. Yeah. Looks like the temperature is done changing. Got it? Okay. That's reaction number one. Yeah, that's all the data for reaction number one. You should be able to find the delta H now for that reaction. Still rolling? We're rolling, yeah. Okay, so now we got to reload for reaction number two. So same game. If it's okay with everybody, 
I'm just going to let Mr. Helwell go ahead and measure this out and dump it into the uh, calorimetry container. Okay. We trust him that it's 50 milliliters. Plus or minus five milliliters. You know. Mm-hmm. Okay. On theory, we should have the same starting temperature. That thermometer has had a chance to sit on the counter and cool off. And let's see. There we go. Reaction temp number two has magnesium oxide. Okay, so here we go. We'll have to weigh out the magnesium oxide is a very fine white powder. It's almost like flour. Mm -hmm. Mass magnesium oxide. Okay. The magnesium oxide HCl experiment, or the uh, reaction, is not as interesting. There's nothing that comes up out of the container. Everything stays put. No gas released. See a temperature change in that? What's yeah, it look like it's, inside? It's changing. It's uh, still looks a little cloudy. Kind of cloudy, huh? Yes, I think that was perfect. Mm. Hard to get into focus. We want to try to read that. you can on that I don't I'm getting uh, the sink behind it in focus better hmm. oh yeah we have flashes of it so all right okay. you can read that pretty well now one thing that's confusing every year is in coffee cup calorimetry you have to use the Q equals MC Delta T equation mm -hmm. so you need a mass right we'll realize the HCL solution we're using is almost entirely water Okay, so you can pretend it's really, in terms of the mass, 50 milliliters of water, and then figure out, well, how many grams of water that is. Okay, there is HCl in there, but not enough to alter the mass enough for us to worry about. All right, good. So we're trying to find the heat of formation of magnesium oxide. That's right. Good luck.